Every day brings new light to help us on our way. Always taking my breath, whether sun or rain. The wind will carry us over that horizon we see. Just got to share with you a, a great experience of great country people hospitality. Um, right behind me, um, a little general store in a place called Dudlikine. It's um, only really just across the road from Ski Lake. So uh, obviously uh, I needed some, some milk and some uh, run out of cereal. And um, these people were nice enough even to uh, need some water as well. Couldn't see anything on the camps for a while. They were just to top the tanks off. So um, yeah, terrific little store and a, a neat little out of the way place. Well, it's not out of the way, the highway's just there. So um, I must say the, the prices at the groceries and everything were terribly reasonable. They were not, they, they were still towny type prices. So um, yeah, terrific little experience and, and the general store itself. So it's, you, know, you can sort of get an idea from out the back here how, how far back it goes. It goes a long way back. And, yeah, you've got tyres and lights and farmers bits and pieces and everything as well. But look after them country stores. They look after us. Where am I? Dulekine. Not, not to be confused with lots of other words. Dulekine, I understand, is the way it's meant to be said. So, Dulekine ended up being a bit of a, a halfway to the goldfields type place. Um, they, uh, back in the mid 1800s, they sent out a, an explorer to find pastoral land. And not only pastoral land, but pastoral land that had some kind of um, water sustainability. So, uh, old mate, uh, what was his name, Clarkson, I think it was, or something, he came out, he found this girl. Oh, what do you know? Over there's a spring. So, um, back in uh, 18... Uh, 63, um, a man, C.C. Hunt. Sounds like he was a bit of a, uh, a bit of a, uh, a water finder, a water improver. So he took that um, spring and he built a better one. Made it deeper, lined it, made it more accessible. So um, out of that, this town started to develop. And along with that, you know, obviously the pastoral, and then um, we're getting around about that 1880s, 1890s odd, where there were gold over there. So then all of a sudden you had all the gold prospectors starting to come through Dukaini. So it ended up being quite a popular little town. It ended up need, being named oh, something in the old Australian something something Commonwealth or something like that. I think they were going to name it. Um, but the railway got built over there. So they had to pump water or trail water down to the railway. So what do you do? Um, what eventually does the railway, the platform, some obviously some towns and bits and pieces got built closer to the, uh, the railway and this little town area um, ceased to exist. So it was um, turned into a bit of a, uh, I understand a golf course too at some stage according to uh, uh, old mate farmer Rick there came by and said g'day how are you and uh, he tends the land around here and plants a bunch of trees and makes sure everything's all kept all top notch so yeah bye bye Dukaini went down that way down to the old train tracks so uh, sad sad end of the town um, but yeah the town down there awesome great little general store um, that's about it really. <laughs> it's not locked down there, poor little town, but support it because it's little towns like that 
they keep these little areas, little farmers and communities all happy. They're, they're, they're bustling and going on. They're doing well. Right, I'm going to have a walk down here. It's only 250 odd metres to the well. I'll see if I can survive with these damn flies. Man, they are thick. Oh, thickest I've ever been. So here we go. A sheep run was established around this well in early 1864 by farmer B and D Clarkson. On February the 10th, 1965, explorer Charles Cook Hunt construction party was engaged in deepening and stone, stoning the well to make it serviceable. So there we have it. Oh, look at that, it's got water in it. Not that I'd get down there and drink of it. But, was that 1865? Right, up and ready to go. Just gonna warm up the wagon, pull in the slide, and I'm I'm off. Next adventure. Been a nice stay here, little lacking. Um, heading down to uh, the road here, and I'm just gonna go up there. A little bit of rain last night, but um, I should be okay. Um, I'll just take it cautiously and see how she goes up to uh, a little interesting uh, rock feature. But um, yeah, it's been nice. Lovely sunset, nice little high breeze. In fact, there was, there was bugger all breeze. Um, and uh, this is kind of getting up the way it is right now. It's kind of like, oh, I forgot about that, the wind. <laughs> anyway, onwards. So uh, follow us as we go and explore towards um, Calabaran. There we go. Judging by the, uh, the sign on the, uh, the road there, I think we're heading in the right direction. Shark mouth rock. Let's look and see what we got in here. Little gate, little fence to come through. And we haven't had far to go. Doesn't look much sharky from this angle. Let's see what it looks like from the other. Righty, coming around the corner. Definitely a big bunch of boulders around the place. There we have that little angle. Is it too many trails? We'll go this way here, a bit too close to it. But, uh, coming at you now. Man, really makes you wonder how that was formed. Well, I guess, I guess you've got the main piece there must have been, yeah, up inside there. And it's been hollowed out or just softer rock or something inside that's slowly weathered down, giving you that appearance. We'll go back a bit and see where we get a better angle from up here for you. Ta da! <laughs> it's like one of those, um, remember those snakes that were, I think they were like made out of plastic, but bamboo originally, and they were segmented and they would uh, yeah, hold the end of the tail of it and it would um, hinge. Looks like one of those. Pop a comment down below and uh, does it look like a, a shark, snapping turtle, um, a dragon, a whale? I suppose if you sort of think that maybe that could have been its uh, dorsal fin. So there's a shark, it's missing a bit of a, a, a signatory um, appearance being that dorsal fin. But we'll have a look and see whether we can uh, find somewhere to Get a snap opportunity. Yeehaw! Well, that was fun. Made it to the, uh, the lookout at uh, Calabaran. Please, I apologize if I've called it Calabaran. I think it's Calabaran. So, 
Made it to the top. Um, I got a big shout out to uh, Wiki Camps. They were on there as a point of interest. There was a couple of little um, um, reviews there that said, uh, yeah, "Be careful coming up." I probably wouldn't tow a huge caravan up um, unless you got, you know, you got your big four-wheel drive, and it's not too bad. I mean, I made it up with that. So, um, but I had my traction control on and uh, didn't want to give it too much. Uh, throttle, but uh, went up okay. Going down, have to take it easy going down. I'll probably, I do have a, a descent on that as well, so might see how that goes on the way down. Um, but yeah, she uh, she managed, managed good. So um, yeah, I've understood that uh, here the the lookout, um, the other person I got with it was so we had uh, wiki camps, and um, there was a when I was at uh, Ski Lake, uh, um, what was that, Bandy Lakes? And the bloke pulled up and I says, well, what is there to see around this place? He goes, like, oh, make sure you go up to the lookout. You're like, oh, what's the road like? He goes, eh, it's all right. So it's kind of like installed confidence back in after Wikicamp's review. And then I um, bumped into Farmer Rick, awesome bloke. And uh, I'm on the way here and he texts me. And he goes, make sure you go up to the lookout. You'll be fine. Man. I am so pleased of those people's advice, especially you there, Rick. Thank you, mate. It was the final, excuse the pun, nail in the coffin that made me come up here. Alrighty, here we go, just for effect. Look at that. It's a great little uh, viewing platform that pops out over the Killaburn, Killaburn, but it, it was actually Killaburnin Hill overlooking Killaburnin. So uh, what we got over there is um, a lot of the, I guess, the grain storage. Um, the tarps are put over the top of it until they get carted um, by rail to the uh, the port or the, the place where they need to be. And we got the residential. And uh, I think the highway is just the other side over here somewhere. And. Um, a wee bit of a town there that we'll go and have a look at but it looks like uh, if that's like a race course or something it's pretty predominant now I'm standing on the the hill which of course is another one of those granite rocks and according to here that the, the water flowing off the rocks was stored to a dam down here on the right and of course like everything that was used for the town and and the railway from there so uh, Oh, what a huge, vast landscape you're looking at there, eh? Can't get over it, it's gorgeous. So there we have it, wonderful vistas of uh, Calabaran. I'm just going to go walk down and have a look at here, but yeah, it was interesting to see the in ingenuity of uh, one of the farmers there. Um, when they were, they, they laid the, the water tank, uh, the water pipe, a half buried in the ground. And um, with it being half buried and of course the ground being quite saline, if that's how you meant to say it, with a lot of saline in the ground, it rusted a large portion of the, the pipes, or half of them anyway. So yeah, this farmer, he couldn't help but notice how many of the, uh, these, these pipes were just all discarded around the, around the grounds. So he came up with the ingenious idea of uh, picking up the pipes and um, cutting them in half. And, uh, welding sections together to make uh, like like troughs obviously used and a little bit of ingenuity there to either hold water or um, um, duct water of which you've got all these rocky outcrops out here obviously they'll come in quite handy anyway um, yeah I've come down this little trail because of um, a rock that looked very similar to one that we saw uh, in um, Karajini I give you the mannequin. Manne the hairdress is mannequin, I think it was. There we go. Another one of those wicked rock structures that have been eroded away either by water or by wind. And uh, it's just sitting there balancing away. A little hard to see the, the head probably like uh, we did in um, Karajini in, in the rocks in that episode. Look it up. But... Um, yeah, pretty amazing when they're balancing like they're like a like a golf ball on a on a tee. So uh, 
it wasn't too far away from that's where we were up there anyway well what can i say holy dooly oh no let's go back to those early ex explorers eureka we've just struck gold um yeah yeah for us explorers it's being able to hook up to a power outlet have some water not far away hot running water in the bathroom for a shower toilet um pretty much got the place to myself at the moment it's um it's a sports ground it's an oval where am i i'm in tamman so uh it's not uh, far out it's about 25 k's i think in a westerly direction from um Kelberin. so uh saw this on wiki camps and it did say it was a free site um, they did say to go to the council, um, the shire on the corner here, number one, uh, to uh, tell them of your arrival. And of course I said, uh, well, does it exist? And they go, yeah, it exists, yeah. And uh, payment, so yeah, it's 15 bucks a night. Man. Last time I paid for a site would have been Westonia. That was beautiful. And anywhere in between that, it's been pretty damn nice. It's free camps, but definitely nice to be able to hook up to a bit of power get me fridge fully cold again, charge me electric toothbrush, um, yeah, charge all those things that got flat, little uh, battery, little uh, Ryobi things that got flat, so it's good, so uh, sun's rise up over there, beautiful moon there I see, and sets over here, so yeah, sets over the, the golden paddocks again over there, the road isn't far away, I will hear a bit of road noise, it's just over here. It's a little later in the day, but I uh, wasn't in any big hurry to, to leave Tamman here. But, yep, the van's all saddled, saddled up, it's all cleaned up, and um, man, this is a great spot. Um, I don't know whether, put down in the comments on if you go to a campsite, would you rather be at a campsite by yourself, or do you want to share it with friends and bits and pieces? I mean, I'll be sitting on the fence, sometimes it's really nice to um, associate with other people but there's some times where you just hey bit of peace and quiet chillax and this was one of those occasions a sports ground to myself bathrooms to myself it's a small town um, it's not much to do but as I say you can walk down to the old servo get a few bits and pieces come on back cook them all up um, if the town's open um, as far as the Shire goes you can get some uh, information there about the, the history which is pretty cool so yeah, I'm going to drive from here, um, I'm going to go and see uh, Hunt's Well and I'm on my way 
um, to know we're special <laughs> and don't go looking at all wiki camps because that's not what it's called but it's just a once again it's just a little quiet little spot I'm still just trying to ease off because I'm going to be in Perth too soon so it's the whole reason why I'm just taking it nice and easy and just doing a little bit of exploring on the way all right hunts well bit of a mission to find actually poor signage there was uh, one obviously at the town the town when I left then the road broke away and it was like do I go left do I go right and I should have gone right and went left and uh, so then after going right got onto another road which did say Huntsville and drove down and then I got another what I get one two three roads one was a no through road and one was looking really slippery and I thought oh dear so I parked it back there and I've got to walk down here I'm a little bit on the money. Let's have a look. Yep. Well, holy mackerel. There's a, a protection grate there so you don't go down, but there's a ladder and yeah, I can see plenty of water down at the bottom there. So that's him, eh? You buddy beauty. Let's have a look and see what the plaque says. There we go, when explorer Charles Hunt first passed through this area on March the 17th, 1864, during his uh, first expedition uh, east of York, he used the native well at Tamman Rock. In February 1865, during his third expedition, a construction party consisting of six pensioners soldiers and ten convicts stoned up this well, just like he did at the other town that we're around in Dudlikon. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Right, hopefully I can get this done without eating too many in the way of flies. We'll get carried away by them. Man, and I've already had breakfast, so I don't need any more. Hear that crunch underneath my feet? I'm at MRD Gravel Pit. And yeah, it's a nice gravel pit, nice and flat. Good little areas to park. Um, it's about 6Ks um, west of um, Tamman. Excuse me for batting all the flies away. Um, if you missed that um, uh, spot where I was the last two nights in Tamman, especially if you can't pay at the council there, uh, the Shire, come down to here, it's free and uh, nice and flat. Good views of the pastures. The road's a little close and you do hear a train from time to time, but at night, she was beautiful. Sunset was nice, stars were good. Couldn't ask for anything better. Um, apart from people that dump rubbish. It's not us, it's not us campers because it's household stuff. Um, just a, a bit of a gripe there. Probably won't see this, but don't do it. It's horrible. So there's a couple of spots around that has a little bit there, but it's a big area, it's good. I'm heading um, down to Cunnerdon. It's a Monday today and um, the reason I stayed here was, was Sunday and don't think much of Cunnerton was going to be open, uh, especially the museum. So I um, want to go and see the museum today. So uh, stay tuned for that. There's some, apparently some pretty neat stuff there at the museum. There's also a motor museum too. So, you know, uh, if you want to stay tuned for that, I'll see if I can find some of that. But hey, some of my plans have come undone and uh, places have been closed. You can't uh, always uh, rely on them. And uh, I should keep my mouth closed and I won't get any of these flies in me. Righty-ho, as you can probably guess, made it to the town of Cunnerton. Signified by a uh, large water tower out the back, which has got something to do about that railway. And I'm in luck. The museum is open. And yeah, look, judging by all the old stuff outside, definitely got a bloody big collection of stuff here. And also I've learned that the museum is one of the old um, pumps for the, uh, for the, uh, the pipeline. So uh, this could be interesting. There we go, there's the uh, pump house with its very large chimney there that uh, burned stack loads of timber to keep the pumps going. And as you can see, Outside, lots of 
old machinery kept this area working. Anyway, enough about that, let's go inside. Goldfields Water Supply Pumping Station number three. How oh, good is that? Okay, so here's an interesting fact. The pipe is joined by this locking bar. It um, took the place of rivets, which um, rivets were bad for corrosion and things, but who would have known? That's pretty awesome. So there was um, 60,000 of these pipes. Um, they were 30 inches in diameter and uh, 28 feet long. So then over this side is one of what would have been three steam engines that were put in here to be pumping water up to the next pumping station. So it pumps water from here uphill into a reservoir and then of course another pumping station takes it out of that reservoir and then pumps it back up and I think there was eight as you remember. It was a very little, it was a very busy place around uh, a lot of these towns. Cunnerton, way in the early days for its sandalwood production. And then of course, uh, with the help of the, uh, the wells and things like that, they were able to get a bit of uh, produce and things up and going, railway. Go. We're going to check out the the flu. There's a tunnel. I guess it's the chimney. Holy mackerelly! I looked down wells. This time I'm looking up a chimney. Oh wow! It's a doozy. The Cunnerdon Museum pump station number three. Put it on your must-do list. Well, there we go. That was a good time. I enjoyed that. Do it. The pump station at Canada, at the museum. Well worth it. So here we go. Egamorpha Pub. Created by a cartoonist back in 1959. He was uh, Ken Maynard, I believe. And uh, he did the cartoons in the Australian Post. Crack uh, a bloke by the name of Lindsay Cooper, who was a very talented builder or designer, whatever it was, he wanted to build them. So one was in 1987 in Albury, another one over in the uh, Sunshine Coast uh, around Aussie World. And this one here was the third to be built in Cunnerdon in 2001, I believe. The, the old car on the roof was made because of, uh, in the cartoon, there was a big flood. And when the waters receded, there was a car left on the roof. Publican said, yeah, too much like hard work, you can stay up there. A couple of interesting bits of trivia. Egamorpha means an Aboriginal, a good place to drink. And if you say Egamorpha backwards, apparently it says, how you going, mate? So, uh, I'm thirsty. And if you like what you see, don't forget to click the like button, the subscribe button, it helps us heaps with uh, being able to bring this content and gives us an idea on how well we're doing. Um, comment, any comments put down below too. We're heading um, out in that Perth direction and then heading south.